When you boot into recovery mode on an Android phone, you expect to find the Wipe Data Factory Reset option among the list of choices. This option is essential for completely resetting your device, especially if you're facing issues that can't be resolved by simply restarting your phone. But imagine going through the process of entering recovery mode only to find that this option isn't there. It can be confusing and frustrating. You might wonder why this is happening. There are several reasons for it. Sometimes it's because the phone you're using has a custom recovery installed. Custom recoveries like TWRP, for example, can change how the recovery mode looks and what options are available. Instead of the familiar wipe data factory reset option, you might see something labeled differently or placed in an unexpected menu. Another possibility is that the manufacturer of your phone has modified the recovery mode. Companies like Samsung, Xiaomi, or Huawei often customize the Android OS on their devices, which includes the recovery mode. They might hide certain options or rename them, making it harder for users to perform actions like factory resets. This is especially common on devices issued by companies or carriers, where security restrictions are put in place to prevent unauthorized resets. In some cases, the absence of this option could be a sign that the recovery partition is corrupted or not functioning correctly. If your phone software isn't working as it should, the recovery mode might not display all the options you're used to seeing. In such situations, you might need to reflash the stock recovery using tools like a DB or Fastboot, which requires a bit more technical knowledge. If you're stuck without the Wipe Data Factory Reset option in recovery mode, your best bet is to try resetting your device through the Settings menu. If that's not possible and you're comfortable with a bit of technical work, let's dive in. NAND Erase is a term you'll often hear in the context of mobile devices, especially when you're dealing with deeper level resets or modifications. So what is it and why is it important? First off, let's break down what NAND is. In simple terms, NAND is a type of flash memory used in almost all smartphones. This memory stores the operating system apps and your data, and it's where all the action happens when you use your phone. Think of it as the hard drive of your device, where everything that makes your phone functional is stored. Now, when we talk about a NAND erase, we're diving into some pretty serious territory. A NAND erase is a process that wipes out this memory at a very fundamental level. It's not like a factory reset, which just removes your data and settings but keeps the operating system intact. A NAND erase goes deeper, clearing out even the operating system and anything else stored on that memory. This is like wiping your phone clean as if it just came out of the factory but even more thorough. Why would you do this? A NAND erase is typically used in scenarios where your device is severely malfunctioning or you're preparing it for a complete overhaul, like installing a new operating system from scratch. It's a last resort to fix deep software issues or when you're trying to unbrick a device that is, bring it back to life after it stopped working. When you're trying to perform a NAND erase and encounter the message MDM mode, can't erase user data, it means that your device is locked by mobile device management MDM software. MDM is typically used by companies or organizations to control and secure the devices they issue to employees. This software can enforce restrictions, including preventing certain actions like a full NAND erase to protect sensitive data. The MDM lock is designed to ensure that the user cannot bypass security protocols or wipe the device completely, which is why you're getting this error. The device is essentially in a state where it's under strict control, and that control includes blocking a NAND erase to safeguard the data or prevent unauthorized changes. To get around this, you would need to remove the MDM lock. When you're working on a device using software, selecting auto device or manually selecting a specific device is all about ensuring that the software correctly identifies and communicates with the device you're working on. Let me break down why this is important. Auto device selection is a convenient option because it allows the software to automatically detect the connected device. This is particularly useful when you're working with multiple devices or aren't sure about the exact model or specifications. The software will scan and identify the device for you, minimizing the chance of errors. This feature is designed to streamline the process making it faster and easier to get started, especially for those who may not be as familiar with the details of their device. However, there are times when selecting a specific device manually is the better approach. For example, if the software is having trouble identifying your device, or if you're working with a device that has special requirements, manually selecting it ensures that the software knows exactly what it's dealing with. This is crucial in situations where precision is needed, such as when you're performing advanced tasks like flashing firmware or making system level changes, by selecting the device yourself, you reduce the risk of the software making incorrect assumptions, which could lead to errors or even damage to the device. Test points are critical components when you're working with devices, particularly in the context of mobile repairs or deep-level diagnostics. They serve a specific purpose, acting as physical access points on a device's motherboard that allow technicians to interact directly with the hardware. 
These test points are used primarily for troubleshooting, recovering brick devices or performing complex operations like bypassing security locks. For instance, if a phone is completely unresponsive meaning it doesn't turn on or can't be accessed through conventional methods, test points can be used to force the device into a special mode such as download mode or emergency mode. This allows the technician to then flash firmware, unbreak the device or recover important data. Test points are typically small metal contacts on the motherboard. To use them, you often need to disassemble the device and connect these points to specialized equipment or simply short them using a tool, depending on the procedure. This interaction effectively forces the device to reset or enter a recovery mode that wouldn't be accessible through normal buttons or software commands. Moreover, in certain devices, connecting the right combination of test points can allow you to bypass some of the more stringent security measures such as secure boot. This can open the door to deep system modifications, but it's something that manufacturers go to great lengths to prevent from being widely known or used. When you're using test points, disconnecting the battery before starting the process is essential for several reasons. However, once you've successfully connected the device via the test points, reconnecting the battery is a necessary step to complete the process. Initially, disconnecting the battery is crucial because it ensures that no power is running through the device when you're making contact with the test points. This reduces the risk of damaging the motherboard or other components due to accidental short circuits. When you're working with test points, which often involve delicate and precise operations, the last thing you want is any power flowing through the device that could lead to sparks or component damage. Once you've successfully used the test points to put the device into the desired mode, whether it's download mode, emergency mode, or another diagnostic stage, you need to reconnect the battery. Reconnecting the battery allows the device to have a stable power source again, which is essential for completing the next steps, such as flashing firmware or performing a recovery. Without reconnecting the battery, the device won't be able to maintain the state you've achieved through the test points. The power from the battery is needed to stabilize the device's operations and ensure that it can successfully execute the commands or processes that follow. Unlocking the bootloader is a critical step for advanced users and developers who want to gain full control over their device. Here's a detailed look at why and how it's done. The bootloader is a piece of code that runs before the operating system starts. Its job is to initialize hardware and load the OS. By default, most devices have a locked bootloader, which means you can't modify the OS or make significant changes to the system files. This lock is there to protect the device's security and ensure that only verified software runs on the device. Relocking the bootloader is the process of restoring the device's bootloader to its original, lock state after it has been previously unlocked. Here's a detailed look at why and how it's done. After unlocking the bootloader, you might want to relock it for several reasons. One common reason is to restore the device to its original state before selling it or giving it to someone else. Relocking the bootloader can help prevent unauthorized modifications and ensure the device is secure for the next user. It can also be necessary for troubleshooting purposes if certain customizations or modifications have caused issues and you want to revert to a more secure setup. In most cases, relocking the bootloader triggers a factory reset, wiping all the data on the device. This wipe is crucial because it ensures that no potentially harmful modifications remain after the bootloader is locked again. The process of relocking is designed to remove any traces of unauthorized changes that might have been made while the bootloader was unlocked thereby safeguarding the device against potential security threats. Relocking the bootloader can also have implications for the device's warranty. Depending on the manufacturer's policies, a relock bootloader might help in restoring the warranty, as some manufacturers consider the lock status when evaluating warranty claims. By relocking the bootloader, you are essentially returning the device to a state that is closer to what the manufacturer originally intended, which could be beneficial if you need to claim warranty service.